and praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. It is so awesome just to be with you again on another Thursday for On Time Midweek Word. I am just so excited and I just feel so blessed. But first of all, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, I do not take it lightly. We do not take it lightly that you are here with us this evening, but we praise God for you and we thank God for you for just stopping by to be with us this evening. Y'all, I really am excited. I'm excited because God is doing great things. There's a song that has just been playing in my heart. I honestly don't really know how it goes, <laughs> but the what's been playing in my spirit is he has done marvelous. He has done marvelous things. Praise the Lord. He has done marvelous. He has done marvelous things. Praise the Lord. And that song has just been playing in my spirit all week long. I even posted it on Facebook because that's how strong has been playing in my spirit. And I just want to just share with you uh, briefly uh, just a, a quick testimony of, I mean, God just does marvelous things. Um, I work for, uh, we make Infamil baby formula and God just, I'm going to cry. It was, um, January 9th that um, our warehouse where, you know, all of our stuff comes in, you know, it was destroyed by a tornado. So we, I mean, we're not able to manufacture. So, you know, the site is on shutdown. And so normally, like if a site is on shutdown like that, we have no work, you know, production cannot go you know people are just sitting around you know twiddling their fingers because we have nothing to do but normally i so what they would do is just you know either let people go you know they lose their jobs but what god did was he is so he does so much he does some marvelous things he's such an awesome god but what god did was everybody was able to keep their jobs when i tell you we have no work we have no work but when i tell you god is a marvelous god I mean, God, he calls people just to brainstorm and, you know, there's different things that we're, you know, working together to do. And then even my manager, he's like, I want you to be the program manager over this, you know, so we can get these things done. So something that, you know, I, what, because people even was coming to me, you know, and I just kept hearing uh, people say, uh, we, we don't know what's going to happen. We're, we're done. We're done. And I was like, no, we're not. No, we're not. Don't say that. We're not done. You don't know what God is going to do. I'm not worried about it. And I wasn't. I was not worried because I knew God was going to do something. So I just want to share that with you because God, he is so faithful. And what people thought, you know, they were going to lose. God still blessed them. God still kept them. And we still have our jobs. Amen. And so um, I think we start back up. Uh, I think August, but there's still so much to do. So God he is just so faithful. Amen. He is so faithful. So I just want to encourage you, you know, in spite of what it looks like, in spite of how it seems, in spite of what people are saying, in spite of just what you're seeing with your natural life, trust God. Trust God. Amen. He does marvelous things. Amen. Well, I just want to share that with you. And right now, let me just say this. I am Don North. I went ahead of myself. I'm Don North here with my husband, Apostle Latron North of Bethel Worship Assembly here in Evansville, Indiana. And we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And again, thank you so much for stopping by. And I'm going to say a, a quick, uh, short prayer and Apostle North is going to take over. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you we praise you. We thank you. And we just honor you, God, for who you are. Lord, you do wonderful things. You do marvelous things, God. Lord, you do the things, God, that we don't even expect, God. You are an on time and faithful, God. And so, Lord, we just honor you, Lord, this evening. We thank you, God, Lord, for everyone, oh God, that's on, oh God, Lord, this midweek word. Lord, you know their hearts. You know their situations. You know exactly what they are in need of, oh God. So, we pray now, Lord, that you feed our souls, Father God. Lord, 
use, oh God, Lord Apostle North, God, to bring your word forth, oh God, as you would have it to come forth, God. None of him, but all of you, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, no, we just bless you, we praise you, and we honor you in it all and through it all. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen and amen. Wow, what an awesome testimony. God is a provider. He he knows how to continue being who he is, and that's being God. We can't outplan God, can't outthink God, cannot outstrategize God. He is, is an awesome God. He is doing marvelous things. And I just proclaim that in your life, that God is up to something good in your life. He is doing something marvelous, something wonderful, something fantastic, something awesome in your life. You may not see, you may not understand, it may not even look like it, but God is always behind the scenes working it out, preparing it out for your good. He's making the pathway clear in some areas of our lives. Amen. So we greet you again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as my wife has already done so beautifully. So we thank you for joining us and in, in, uh, as she opened us up with a wonderful prayer as well. And so we're going to now go into our, our giving and we're going to do our giving confession and after our giving confession i'm gonna turn this back over uh, to my wife so she can finish up some announcements so we thank you all that continues to support us and partner with us and pray for us through uh many ways through like i said through prayer um encouraging us and also uh giving to this ministry supporting us with your giving of giving of worship we thank you so so much our you see our cash shop our venmo our zelle and our mailing address that mailing address is bethel worship assembly 2616 thornhill drive evansville indiana 47725 so we have zelle as well and that Zell is uh, attached to our email at bwaebv at bethelworshipassembly.org. Of course, our cash app and our Venmo, you see it there. It is the same. Amen. So let's do our declaration over our giving on tonight. And then I will pray over our giving and then turn this back over to my wife. Oh, right. Our giving confession. You see it there on count of three. Let's read this together. One, two, and three. Upon the authority of your word, because I am a giver, I receive the blessings from the open windows of heaven. I bring my tithe and offering to your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked and the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour a blessings upon me that there is not enough room to receive them. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid in full, debt demolished, and my entire family saved and walking with God. I am blessed going in and I am blessed going out. I stand in perfect health and I walk in divine favor, abundance, and increase. I am prosperous in all that I do and in all that I pursue in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for this time, oh God, to give. We bless you, God, for those who continue, God, to sow and to, oh God, tithe and worship, oh God. Um, with their giving, oh God, to this ministry. We ask you continue to make ways out of no ways. We actually continue to bless, oh God, we actually continue to rebuke the devourer for our sake in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, that you will, God, oh God, limit the caterpillar, the canker worm, oh God, to prevent the, the, them from God from coming and eating up, oh God, the good of our land in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, God, for increase. We thank you, God, for preventing the God 
not our substance, oh God, from being ate up and destroyed in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you are the God of enough. You're a God of increase. You're a God of us, oh God, an endless supply in the name of Jesus. And God, every financial need, oh God, oh God, we thank you by faith, Father, we proclaim, oh God, it is met in the name of Jesus, oh God. Every bill paid, oh God, gives and surprises, oh God, found in the mail, oh God. Oh God, debt demolish, oh God. Oh God, favor, grace, oh God, to call us, oh God, to, oh God, to get ahead and to be ahead, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, oh God, for this time, oh God, to Oh God, to soul, God, either on, oh God, tonight or tomorrow, whatever uh, day, oh God, or whatever time, Father. But God, we continue to trust you in our finances and we continue to trust you as we, as we are worshipers in our giving. So God, we thank you. God, we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Praise God. We are excited because next Saturday, August 3rd, um, is a, a back to school. It's called a back to uh, school festival. It's here in Evansville, Indiana at the YMCA is where underprivileged uh, families or youth uh, or, you know, needy families uh, will be blessing with back to school supply. So if you would like to be a part of that, we would encourage you to. It's going to be a blessing. Uh, it's going to be so much fun uh, for, for the kids, but it's also a blessing to us to be able to give. So if you would like to be a part of that, we encourage you to. Um, if you want to send donations, uh, please make sure that you notate that donation for back to school. Um, we would love for you to be a part of that because the kids will be blessed by um, just by you. Amen. And then also um, remember uh, each Tuesday we uh, have Tuesday morning prayer. That's at six o'clock central, six o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, God has his way on those calls. Amen. So if you're available at that at six o'clock a.m., or even if it's a if it's a challenge to, uh, to you, please join our uh, prayer call. Uh, that number is 412-679-5477. And the access code is 4930233-POUND. Amen. And then if you do uh, desire prayer or have a prayer request or know someone that has, is in need of prayer, you can text your prayer request to 833-283. 3837, or you can also use your uh, phone to uh, uh, capture that U, uh, QR code and it will take you straight to the prayer request and we'll, uh, we'll reply right back to you. We want to touch and agree and believe God with you and we'll uh, be, uh, uh, pray with you on your behalf. Amen. So um, if you have a prayer request or know someone that has a prayer request, please send that uh, prayer re uh, request text your prayer request to that number. Amen. And then also uh, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. We have so many messages on there and we've been hearing great feedback from those messages. But if, if you miss any message or if you just want to go back and just rehear a message or rewatch a message, be sure to go to our YouTube channel and then like it share it and also subscribe it and subscribe to it. And when you subscribe to it, you're going to get something back letting you know. You're going to get a notification that you got something good waiting on you. Amen. <laughs> you got something good waiting on you. So be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Amen. And then last but not least, y'all, God is doing great and mighty things. Apostle North is being affirmed. Amen. To uh uh, 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 apostle, amen. There's going to be a celebrate or a ceremony in uh, California. And if you, if bear with me one second, I'm going to try to share the video with you. It, it, it'll give it all, it'll give it, give you all the information you need. The Nehemiah Alliance Christian Fellowship International declares, I shall live. Join us at the 2024 911 Prayer Conference, August 30th through September 1st, 2024. With our conference hosts, Bishop Edward and Lady Andrea Wright, and host pastor, Bishop Elect Terry Nelson. With special guest Bishop Gentry Richardson Jr. in Bethlehem Temple of Los Angeles on Friday, August 30th at 7 p.m. Let's elevate our praise with Minister of Music, Jeremy Nelson, and the maestro, Daniel Nelson. Join our youth and evangelism ministry.
Ministries as they host Community Day and Drive by Prayer on Saturday, August 31st at 10 a.m. This is a free event with food, fun, fellowship, and free clothing and shoes for the community. All are welcome. Let's win the city of Los Angeles for Christ. On Sunday, September 1st at 4 p.m., we will celebrate 37 years of ministry, honoring our chief apostle and presiding bishop, Edward L. Wright Jr., during our official day worship service. We are also gathering as a body to affirm, consecrate, and ordain our next class of NACFI leaders. All roads lead to the First Holy Mount Zion Church, located at 8117 South Main Street, Los Angeles, California, 9003. We will see you there. Come and grow with us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is an awesome time. Amen. This is awesome, awesome, awesome. We know probably many of you will may not be there, but it's actually in California. Uh, we will be going. Uh, I'll be there. <laughs> but, you know, if you do happen to be there, we would love for you to be there and support us. Um, and also it will be live stream as well. So I'll be we'll be able to uh, be able to share that information with you when it does come. Amen. So right now I'm going to turn it over to Apostle North. Amen. Thank you so much for those wonderful announcements. And thank you all that um, I see some chats there in the uh, uh, chat there saying uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Continue to pray with us and for us that we'll continue to build the kingdom of God. Amen. That's what it's all about. We're just trying to uh, uh, encourage people and build build people and win the loss for Jesus Christ. I'm commissioned by God. I'm, I mean, I'm one of the sent ones. Hallelujah. Glory to God to do the will of the Lord and to spread the message and the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, his birth, death and his resurrection. And he still heals. He still saves. He still delivers. That's what I proclaim. Um, last week we talked about uh, I believe we talked about I, be I believe I am healed and I'm telling you me and my wife we had church without y'all I'm so sorry we had to go we had to get off we had church by ourselves after that word I'm telling you you talking about God did something to me not even not not only on the Bible study lesson, but as we got off, we continue to worship God and pray, and we continue to confess our healing after we got off. And man, God did some things, broke some things, restored some things, revived some things with me and uh, with me uh, concerning me and my wife. Was, you know, just healed us of some things. I'm just whoa, glory to God. I'm telling you, God, He is still a healer, and not only is He a healer, He's a healer of anything and of all things, whether it's emotional, physical, mental. Okay, what it is, my God is a healer. For His word declared, I believe, I believe Isaiah 55, that He Isaiah 54, that by His stripes that we or heal. That's what his word declares. And that's what I stand on. And I say that to you today, that you are healed, no matter what it is, no matter the pain you may be feeling somewhere in your body right now, no matter the, no matter the loved one you may be concerned about, they too are healed. As a matter of fact, last week, we called out names. We called out family member names and we, we called out people names and we confessed as well that they too are healed. And so we we believe not some of the word, but we believe all of the word. James James five, he said to call the elders of the church. He asked the question. He said, "Is any sick among you? If so, call the elders of the church and then do what? Go get the oil." Woo! Hallelujah! Bless your name, Jesus. Oh, thank you. And I told I told people last week, go get your oil, no matter what it is. <laughs> No matter what it is, if it's old, if it's old chicken grease, old fish grease, go get it. I mean, I, I mean, I'm just we just stretched out on we just stretched out on faith, and we went and grabbed some oil. Me and my wife, we grabbed some oil. We matter of fact, we got some more oil after we got off of here. I believe in operating in all the Word of God. Jesus told them. Jesus told the lepers, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says that when the lepers, as they went, 
they were healed as they went. We have to keep walking out the word of God. We have to keep walking in faith for us being the just, being the righteous. We live how? By faith. And so I want to encourage you to continue to walk out the word of God and continue to walk this, continue to walk out this Christian life journey in faith and by faith. And as you go, Ooh, God's working some things out. As you go, he's healing some things. As you continue to trust him, be faithful, he's working out some things. He's healing some things, restoring some things as you go. But guess what? You got to keep going. You got, you, oh, man, high five somebody say, I'm, I'm going. I'm still going. I got to keep going. We move forward in spite of. We believe the report of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to jump in this word tonight. I'm not going to be too long. We had some some announcements that took a little bit of our time, so I'm just I'm just going to do a uh, kind of just scratch the surface here for this on this word tonight for this word on tonight. Kind of maybe an intro introduction uh, to this word, and maybe prayerfully I can get a little bit deeper with this word on on next week. But let's turn to uh, Luke uh, 22. I'm going to read verses 31 through 33, and this is going to be the King James Version, Luke, chapter 22 of Luke, verses 31 through 33. We'll start there on tonight. All right. Starting with Luke 31, verse 31, the 22nd chapter. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desire to have you and to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. And Peter said unto, unto him, Lord, I am, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. I'm going to go back to verse 32. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thine brother. I want to use this for a, a short lesson topic on tonight. You know, Maybe a series with the same um, topic lesson, more than likely. A turned heart. A turned heart. A turned heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you, God. Oh, God, for our hearts and our minds and our ears to be attentive to your word. God, you know what we need, God. We're on here because, oh, God, we love you. We want to be better. We want to be more like you, Jesus. Oh, God, we oh, need answers to some things, God. God, so whatever it is, Father, we know that your word, oh, God, is the uh, is the information, the source of information for our spirits. So download, oh, God, into us. Speak to us, oh, God. Oh, God, strengthen us, oh, God, that we can uh, hear your word retain your word and apply your word to our lives in the name of Jesus. So as we continue to move forward, as we continue to go, God, we go forth in power, we go forth in strength, we go forth, oh God, knowing, oh God, that you're with us and that you'll never leave us and forsake us. In Jesus' name, bless your word on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, thank God and amen, amen. And let's do our, I almost forgot, but let's do our word declaration. For those who call in, we thank you that you call in, but when you call in, you um, of course you can't see um, the announcements and the videos and our declarations that we do. So please join us live. You're more than welcome to use the code on the leak as well. You just go to your Google Meet and um, go to your Google Meet app on your phone or on your PC and you put in the link code and you come on and be live with us um, on, on Thursdays. And so we're going to do our word declaration. It's not, it's not long, just real quick, but we got to say it. We got to say it. Got to say it. Let's say this together on three, one, two, and three. Lord, I want your word to challenge me, to change me, to convict me, and to make me more like you. One more time. Let's say that together. Lord, I want your word to challenge me, to change me, to convict me, and to make me more like you. We declare that that, that is the, what the word of the Lord is going to do for us on tonight. All right, we're talking about a turned heart. So here, Jesus tells Peter, he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you and to sift you 
as we, he said, but I'm praying for that your faith won't fail you. And when you are converted, convert, I'll deal with that word here in a little bit. When you are converted, strengthen thy brother. And that's the word that this lesson is going to be focused on, that word converted, converted. Um, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, uh, King James Version says, therefore, if any man, anyone, humanity, be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If anyone is in Christ, he is now a new creature. All things should be passed away. Behold, and all things should become new. Okay, that's what it says. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things are become new. So when I when the Lord um, put this lesson on my heart this week, I, if I had to use a uh, a substratum thought for this lesson, it would be uh, recovery, uh, recovery from um, the the fellowship among believers. Be, the, the tagline that you and I are familiar with is church hurt. But I don't want to tag that as, as church hurt because it's not church hurt. Well, I, we've heard that for years. You know, we've gone through church hurt. You know, there's nothing like church hurt. Church hurt cuts deep. Church hurt hurts. But it's, it's not a such thing as church hurt. We tag it at that. We tag it like that and as that because of the place where the hurt transpired. So since we was hurt in a building where church is a symbol, we call it church hurt. But it's not church hurt. It's not church hurt. So Jesus tells Peter here in the thirty-second verse of Luke twenty-two. He says, "When you, when you, when you get it together, when you are con converted, you're gonna be able to go back." and strengthen your brothers. I'm praying for you that your faith won't fail you. The word, the word converted here in um the I would say probably the 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 Greek the Greek word is uh ecclesia which means um called um called called ones those who are called to assemble to assemble themselves together but also um, the English, the English word really does not come from the Greek word ecclesia, but from the word curacon. And the, the word curacon means dedicated, the ones dedicated to the Lord. And also just the English definition translated from Greek, from, from the English word to the Greek word um, converted means to, um, to, to turn back, to return, to, to come back or to turn back to one's um, self or, or acknowledgement. So in other words, Jesus is telling Peter that I'm praying for you that your faith don't fail you. But when you turn, but when you turn back and when you are strengthened, you're going to be able to uh, strengthen your strengthen your brethren after you turn uh, back to me. And so what what is what is Jesus telling Peter? Um, Peter here, that once if your faith don't fail you, that uh, if your faith, I'm praying for you that your faith don't fail you. And so when you are converted, when you turn back to me, then you won't be able to strengthen your brother. So so to me, that Jesus is saying here that when you really, when you turn back to me, when you go in a different direction from what you are accustomed to, when 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 your when your heart, when your heart and your mind is turned to to me, back to me from a love perspective or from a kingdom perspective when you understand that when you get that kind of direction then you will be able to strengthen your brethren and where where is your your, your brother your brother could be the ones that are uh are struggling those who are lost don't know christ it also could be the, the brethren that's uh, among the fellowship the ones that are that are members in in the body of christ but jesus is telling peter once you once you get your heart really going in the direction where we needed to go in, then you're going to be able to strengthen your brother. So that's what got me, has me to this place where I'm saying about it's not church hurt. It's not church hurt. Maybe, maybe just make a side note of this, maybe it's not church hurt 
as we have tagged it. Maybe it's the lack of hearts truly being turned or oh, take your time. Maybe it's really, uh, maybe we're dealing with the, the lack of really not having hearts converted, converted to the point to where the hearts and minds are really turned in the direction where the focus is God, the word of God, the love of God, the kindness of God, and the and the grace of God. That's why he's telling Peter, he said, Peter, I pray for you that your faith fail you not, that your faith will fail you. And when your heart is turned back to me, when you when your heart is, is converted, the Greek word here for uh, convert is epstrophe abstrophe, which means to turn again, to come back to. So the Lord is saying, I'm praying for you that your faith won't fail you. And so when you come back to me, when you return back to me, when you find your, when you find your heart now going in a new direction, as 2 Kings 5 and, 5 and 17 says, if any man be in Christ, he becomes new. So maybe it's, it's not it's not church hurt as we have tagged it, but maybe it, it's, it's not Maybe it's people that has not become this new creature in Christ. So, so I, I, I want to first try to de demolish the tag of this church hurt because the church, the ecclesia, is, is, is not a church until people come together and gather in one place. When we assemble ourselves wherever, it could be at a mall, it, it could be in the street, it could be under a tent, it could be under the tent roof. When the people of God come together and assemble ourselves, that moment, that atmosphere, that place is now the church. So the building itself, the building itself is just an empty building. The building is innocent. The pew didn't do nothing to you. The wall didn't do nothing to me. Uh, the, the pillars didn't do nothing. Uh, the, the carpet, the chairs, the front of the, all that is innocent. And we blame the poor building. We blame the poor, the poor building for all of the distress and agony that we have gone through upon the empty building. The building itself is innocent. But but it's when people come together and assemble ourselves, that's when it becomes the church. But even when we assemble ourselves as church, even, even that assembly is still innocent because we tag it as church hurt. Like everybody who has come to assemble themselves to become the church has afflicted the pain. No, it's not everybody. It, it's, 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 it's not everybody. Everybody hasn't afflicted us with pain. And let me tell you something about church hurt. Church hurt, um, we, as, we, as we tag a church hurt, it can be so, um, so deep and so devastating that it will cause a person to decide within themselves that they will never step foot inside a church building again. But again, it's not church hurt. We have been afflicted by people. And maybe it's people that haven't been really truly converted. Maybe they haven't really adopted adopted this newness of Christ. Maybe their hearts really haven't turned all the way to God to go into another new direction. Because when your heart is prostrated before the Lord, when the love of God has really come upon you, when the love of God really lives in you, you have we should have a godly right intention to mean all men well. Oh, glory to God. It's, it's nothing about a believer that should want to afflict any kind of pain or agony upon anyone, not the love of God, not the fruit of the spirit. You no. Know, so when we become when we become in Christ, we should be become this new creature to where now we are converted or have turned from our wicked ways. Oh, Lord, where we where we turn back to God, where, where we deny ourselves and we truly follow him. And so we have to stop blaming the empty building because the Lord's the Lord's going to send a word over the next couple of weeks to cause people to start recovering from people that has hurt them in fellowships. You notice I didn't say church hurt. It's not the again the building is innocent, but it's is un maybe it's again maybe it's unconverted people or people who has not made a conscious decision that they're going to give all themselves to God and live for God wholeheartedly. Because let me tell you something, a person that is no longer convicted 
a person that cannot be convicted of their wrongdoing is a dangerous person. A, a person that has a, 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 hippo, a hypocritical spirit, a, a spirit of hypocrisy, is, is a is a person that that can that is so distanced from the ability from being convicted, and that is a dangerous individual. So we can't blame the building. We can't blame the name of the church. We 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 have to know that it's it's a it's a people issue. Jesus. Excuse me, Jesus said, I want to find, I believe it's, um, uh, yeah, Ephesians 5. In Ephesians 5, verses uh, 25 to 27, I'll read King James Version. This is what Jesus said about his church. He said, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Why? That it might be sanctified and cleansed and cleansed with the washing of the water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish husband love your wives how christ loved the church and he gave himself for it. christ did not sacrifice himself give himself to die up on a roll, old rugged cross as brutal as he did. He did not die such a death like that for the church, for the church to inflict, to inflict pain and agony and distress upon people. No, sir, no ma'am. That is not the intent. That is not the design of the church. That is not the design on the mission of the purpose of the church. It is not. The church is not designed to hurt anyone. The church is not to designed to damage anyone. And the church is not designed to destroy anyone. So no, it's not a church issue. Maybe it's a heart issue. Ooh, glory to hallelujah. Maybe it's a heart issue and it's not a church issue because again, the church, the church is a church. We come and assemble ourselves together. So there's something the Lord told me something a long time ago. He put something in my heart dealing with this some, some time ago. He, he he said to me, People, all people has the potential to be dangerous. All of us. All of us, all of us are not dangerous people. I'm not talking about the body of Christ, just people in general. All people has the potential to be dangerous. Why? Because we're in this flesh. We, we are subject to fall and to fail and to mess up each and every day. But although we have the potential to be dangerous, all of us are not danger, dangerous, but yet we hold that potential and have that potential to be dangerous people. And so when we assemble ourselves among other people, anything is liable to happen. Anything is liable to take place. And so what happened is when well, let me speak for myself is, is, is when I be, when I got saved and I, I knew the church, the, the building was a place I needed to be. I was not taught. I was not educated upon how to fellowship among believers, among the assembly of the church. Nobody told me what, what you may see, what may happen, what may happen to you, what may be done when we, when people are assembled together as a church, because I thought, and you, somebody on here too, probably, I thought that the safest place that anybody could ever be is not only in the hands and the arms of God, but also among believers. And, 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 and it is not to say that it's not the best place, the safest, one of the safest places to be for, for our spirit man to grow, to connect with God and to learn of God and to worship God. Yes, that is the place for all of that to happen, but, but it does not come without with without being cognizant of some some your environment some things that can happen around you and so we're not taught well I was not taught the possibilities of what can go on among people again not the church but among but among people because every day every day you and I 
We It's a decision that we make every day that we're going to live for Christ. Every day I get up, one of the things I pray in my prayer, I, call, I say this all the time on here, Lord, I want to be better today for you than I was on yesterday. I say it all the time in my prayer time, Lord, today, I want to be better for you today than I was on yesterday. But everybody, everybody that attends an assembly doesn't have that attitude, has not adopted to, to has not adopted to become that new creature. Yes, they people sing, people people shout, people uh, usher, people preach, people sing in a choir, people's on a praise team, but yet their heart has truly have not been converted. And that brings me to this point. So that's why people experience the agony and affliction from, from people because we're dealing with converted people and we're dealing with and we're dealing with not so converted people. And so what happens is we become people can become infected. The Lord showed me something. He said when we assemble ourselves together as a church, two things is two things happens. Either people is going to be infected by converted people or people is going to be infected by unconverted people. So, 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 so there's going to be infection. So there's a, there, there's going to be a, something contagious and whatever is contagious is going to be caught by that person from the people that are converted or the people that's not converted. And us that's trying to live right, us that has really turned our hearts to God, it's not to say that we're perfect. It's not that I'm not saying that we got it right. I'm not saying us as holy, uh, living right and fire baptized, the Holy Ghost filled that we're perfect. We are still imperfect people who still have the potential to do something dangerous, to be something dangerous, to fall and to fail. We, we are because we're imperfect people. We're human first. And so just because we're saved, just because we know some scriptures, just because we've been saved for a while and we know the word, we can go in depth in the word. We're not exempt from falling. We're not exempt from messing up. We're not exempt from making mistakes. But when your heart is truly converted, when your heart is really turned towards God and the things of God, when your heart has been converted to become like the mind of Christ, when you adopt a kingdom mindset, then when we do fall and when we do make a mistake, mistake, and if we think we have offended anybody, we are quick to get it right. I, I am quick to repent, quick to ask for forgiveness. If I got to go back and get something right, fix something, apologize for anything or whatever it may be. Because why? I want to every day be in the right standing with God. Now that's my heart. That's where I am because I want my heart totally turned towards the Lord. And when I, when, when my heart and your heart is totally turned to the Lord, God, Jesus told Peter, when that happens, he said, then the most important part of that passage of scripture there in Luke 22 is the word then. Jesus said, Peter, I'm praying for you that your faith don't fail you. But when your heart is really turned back to me, Jesus said, then, then you will be able to go and strengthen your brother. So it's the word then that sticks out to me. Then, first of all, make sure you wear where you you wear you are where you need to be in me. The the it, it's it's a plague that's going on in the body of Christ where it, it's damaging believers that they hear one thing being said, preached, and done in the pulpit, but they hear. Or, or see a different lifestyle exemplified somewhere else. And so people, again, the people is like, if I'm going to go through that, if I have to experience that, I'm better off just trying to have church by myself at home. And that is a trick of the enemy. That is a diversion. That's a diversion from, from corporate worship. That's a diversion to, to grow um, within the um, assembly of believers. That is a diversion. That's why Jesus said it. In John 10, 10, the enemy comes, but to steal, kill, and to destroy. It is all of, it is all a diversion. The enemy knows how to set up a, a, a person or a piece or a piece here or a piece there to cause us to be distracted and diverted. He knows how to do it. But again, we was, I was not taught, I was unaware 
of, of things that can transpire or happen when believers come together, when we assemble ourselves. And it's not that everybody's hypocritical. It's not that everybody has a jealous spirit. It's not that everybody um, has a spirit of gossip or backbiting. It's not, it's not that when we assemble ourselves that the whole entire assembly is uh is uh, infectious with uh, unconverted hearts. I'm not saying that, but what happens is the person or the people, a group of people that afflicts the distress or agony or pain or offends us or hurt us, it grabs our attention. It, gra it grabs our attention. So now our focal point is, it, it's not the good, but the bad that happens the bad that happens. And so now we, we don't focus on the, the few people in the assembly that, that is trying to live right. The people that do have a converted heart, but see now we've been hurt and offended. And so now that becomes our focal point. But because we know people are subject to fall, people are subject to do anything at any given time, we understand that we have to understand that nobody in this earth is perfect. There's only one perfect one, and that's Christ. All of us, we're, we're imperfect people. And so, so we think that when we come to the assembly of a place and we see people in certain positions that they got it right, that they, they, have, they have made a conscious decision that they're all in. And I'm telling you, I, I'm pretty sure there's some folks on here right now that you have been surprised. You have been surprised because one of the things that happens is sometimes it's the person we least expect to afflict the pain. It's the person we least expect to find out that they're, they're not living what they're singing. They're not living what they're shouting. They're not living what they're teaching and preaching. And so that stings, that, that hurts, especially when the hurt comes by somebody we least expect. We least expect, but our confidence has to always be in God and not in man, not in man. So our focal point always have to be number one, Christ. And number two is, is our own personal growth. Because if, if anybody has experience of uh, being uh, afflicted by people in the assembly, because I got to get away from the tag church hurt. If anybody on here has been afflicted or by people in the assembly and the gathering of a church. Don't don't count it against don't account it against the whole system of the church. Again, Jesus did not die for the church to afflict pain and agony upon anyone. So it's not the whole church. It's not the kingdom. It's not the whole system of the church that has hurt you. It's that one person or those two people or four people who has not figured it out yet. Oh, thank you, Jesus, who who has not uh, walked in the true heart of being converted, because you cannot tell me that a true converted heart is going to have a, a jealous spirit. A true converted heart is not going to lie on somebody. A true converted heart is not going to gossip and say all men are evil against people. A true converted heart is, is not going to control and, and bring and, and try to destroy people, destroy people's character and to destroy people's lies by the word. Not a true heart, not a true heart, not perfect, but I'm just saying a true heart that is truly be, because if it wasn't possible for us to have a true heart turned to God, Jesus wouldn't have told Peter that. Jesus told Peter that when your heart is truly returned to me, when your heart and your mind lines up with mine, then you can go back and tell somebody uh, uh, about me. When you return back to when you get this right for yourselves. And so we have to be the one for, for people that have experienced the affliction of pain through people who have assembled themselves together. And I know that's a long way to say it, but again, the building is innocent. We, we have to recover. We've got to heal. Why? So we can go back to the assembly. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So we can go back to the assembly and we can be that light to, to tell somebody, to tell some young Christian, to, to tell some baby in Christ, to exemplify them, to show that, that, that the whole, or the, all the assembly of the gathering of people is 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 not unconverted people. S some folks among us is trying to live right, and we have to be the ones to show. I'm not saying I have all my eyes dotted. I'm not saying I, I have all my T's crossed. But my heart, I've given to God. 
if when I when I mess up, I, I try to hurry up and fix it. If I need to apologize, I try to hurry up and apologize. When I need to repent, I ask for forgiveness. I try to hurry up and repent and ask for forgiveness. So somebody needs to see that what they see on the praise team, what they see at the door, when they see the greeters at the door, when they see the ushers, when they see ones worshiping and praising God, that the same folks they see on the inside is the same folks that can see and make contact with on the on the outside. The same people that greet them and hug them inside the building is the same folks will meet them and greet them in Walmart. We, we need to exemplify the love of God, not just inside the building, but on the outside of the building. We have to stand down and let people know, yo, there is some issues among the assembly, but I'm not a part of them. I'm not a part of not, not to say that I got it all right, but I'm here to tell you that my, I've given my heart to God to, to show you that I'm walking out. I'm trying my best each and every day to walk out the fruits of the spirit. So we can't charge the church. Oh, God, we can't charge. We can't charge. We can't charge the building. We we can't. We, the, again, the empty building is it, innocent, but it's people who hearts. It, they're struggling. They have maybe they haven't made again. Maybe they haven't made that conscious decision to walk in the fullness of God. Because you cannot walk in the love of God and the fullness of God and the salvation of God and not be convicted. It is no way. It, it is is no way the way that you your heart is really turned to God and you can keep talking about people and gossip about people and lying on people and never get convicted. No, there's something wrong with that. Uh uh. Not 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 a heart that's after God. Not a kingdom heart. Not 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 a kingdom not a kingdom mindset. Oh, it's absolutely no way that we're. The word ecclesia that is translated into the word furicon, it means dedicated to the Lord. So people that come to assemble themselves, when we come assemble ourselves, there is a remnant of people that is dedicated to the Lord all the way. And I want to be one of the ones that's that's dedicated to the Lord with my whole heart. So what so what what I'm when I'm preaching. And what I'm teaching, I am living. And when somebody hear the word of the Lord come that comes out of my mouth, they know from a shadow without a shadow of doubt, I'm living it. Not because I'm wearing big crosses and toting big Bibles. Oh, glory to God. But just a consistency of living that every time they see me and every time they see you, wherever you are, they see the example. Woo, you exemplify Christ. You exemplify his joy. You exemplify his peace. You exemplify his grace. There's no such thing as as a mean Christian. And I'll, I know somebody going to disagree me, disagree with me on that. Well, mean, 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 mean Christians. No, that person just needs deliverance. That's all. And then they need deliverance. They're a Christian, we just need deliverance from that attitude. Oh, we all got something that we're working on. We we're all striving to be better. But I just don't want to infect somebody with a with an unconverted heart. If I'm going to be contagious, I'm going. If I'm going to be infectious, I want to be infectious with the fruits of the spirit. I want to be infectious with the love of God, with the grace of God, uh, not in the suit and in, in, in my vestments and in, in clergy gear, and in, not in, in the church, not in the building, not doing worship, not when the song was playing, when the word is going forth. But wherever I'm seen, wherever you are, we always want to exemplify the body of uh, exemplify the kingdom of God within the body of Christ, because somebody. Has said, I'm never going to church again. They blame the building, they blame the system of the church, and we have to know we cannot account it to the church. We have to account it to people struggling to have a converted heart. But here is the question: Is your heart converted? Is your or you is your heart truly turned to God, where you can safely say that you that you will not, cannot? afflict any pain purposely upon anybody. We're not going to go to church, shout and have a good time, and then be, be in a corner parking lot, uh, gossiping about people and causing a mockery and, and grief upon uh, people because of, because of our uh, disposition, uh, our judgment of who we think they are 
Oh, good God, I'm, I'm telling you, I've been there and done. It's nothing anybody can tell me that they have experienced in church that I have not experienced and gone. But you talking about afflicted by people in a, in assembly, uh, in the assembly of the church? You you talk. You, I don't have time. I don't have time to to tell you uh, my testimony, the things I've experienced by the way of uh, assemblies. I don't have it, but I know I'm not the only one. It's someone here right now in the sound of my weak voice. You have experienced yourself the agony of others by the way of the of the gathering of, of believers, of believers. But 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 again, I we I didn't know that that was a possibility that could ever happen. But this is but this is the revelation God wants us to get tonight. It's unconverted hearts. And what do we Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Pray for those who who despitefully use you and say all men are evil against you. We have, now that we're now that we're seasoned and becoming older, now we need to take the young babes in Christ and those who come to our fellowships and they get saved and they on fire to for the Lord. We have to have some sidebar conversations with them. We have to we have to educate them. We have to let let them know what we. We're so glad that you're saving and angels in heaven are rejoicing that you're giving your life to Christ. But but I want to help you protect your faith. I want you to help. I want to help protect the fire that you have. I had nobody to help me to protect the fire. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I had nobody to help me and educate me to protect the fire that I once had. It's a word that I learned in seminary called anthropology. Anthropology is the study of, of society. And, 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 and the study of society talks about the different characteristics of, of people that we can encounter in our societies, in our neighborhoods, in our cities, in our counties, in our in our towns, because we because we're dealing with um, a general society. And when you're dealing with society, you're dealing with people. And guess what? People comes from all kind of places, all kind of backgrounds or from different from different cities, from different countries. You know, so, so our society is made up from different people. And guess what? When we assemble ourselves together, when we come to when we assemble ourselves together to to uh, to comprise of the church, guess what? That's a society. And that is a society that's made up of all kind of people. Made up of all kind of people, people that's trying to live right, uh, people that's, that's that's faking it, people that really, people there, spectators, people people assemble themselves for church for all kind of reasons. This I did not know. People will come to church, you know, for for all kind of reasons, just to see what somebody got on, just just to just to see how the the guest preacher gonna do today, or just to see how the the, the new minister that just got ordained to elder how he gonna do today. So so it's so many different reasons and attitudes that people assemble themselves to to the assembly of the church that makes up the that makes up a, a society. So this I did not know. I did not know. That these things could could happen among the assembly, but but when we know, when we find out that this is a potential that we have to tell somebody else, and so we can't again, we can't charge it to the building. We have to charge it to maybe hearts just not truly being converted. But we, you and I, we have to make sure that our hearts are truly converted to the point that we do not cause anybody in our assemblies any discomfort any grief, any agony, any pain, everything that I experienced by the way of affliction and hurt through, through people in the assembly, I told, this is my vow to God, I will not, I will never be the corporate, be the one to cause anybody, any pain, any grief through the way of church, through the way of ministry. No, it, no esteem, it cuts too deep. The, the way I've been treated, the what's been done to me, I will never do it to anybody else. I mean, it took me years to recover. It, it it takes time to recover from such from from such deep stabs. It, it it does, and so I am not going to ever be the one to cause anybody any any pain or agony or found uh, uh, doing something to to cause somebody um, grief and discomfort in their spiritual walk with Christ. No, so I want to be, and I hope this word is challenging you too as well. That you should want to be that one to say, "Hey, I had to recover from some stuff." I had to forgive some people. Some people cut me deep and, and hurt me deep. But it was some things I wasn't aware. I blamed it as church hurt, but I realized it wasn't church hurt. It's just people still trying to find their way. 
Ooh, glory to God. It's some people still trying to figure it out. They still, they're still struggling, trying to tap into true, to tap into tap into the true love of God. The true conviction of the Holy Spirit hadn't hit them yet because we got to, we got to look at this from the perspective of grace. We all need grace. How, how was your life before you really came into Christ? What did you do? Who did you, <laughs> who did you talk about? Who did you lie on? When, when before before Christ came into your life, who did you hurt? You offended you offended somebody, and, and so until we come into this place of real conversion, again we're subject and liable to to be damaging to people. So you know, hurt people. I got to finish this up. You know, hurt people hurts people. Ooh. and unconverted people will hurt almost anybody, almost anybody, because conviction hasn't came into their heart. And so now they, they're 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 they don't have a heart of flesh but a heart of stone, and so they allow they are liable to do and say anything about anybody about any given time. But what do we do? We pray for them. We pray for them. But secondly, also we become the ones who help restore. We becomes the the ones that that's the light that that becomes the light to show that hey every everybody's not everybody's not lying in the church. Everybody's not hypocritical in the church. Everybody, everybody is not fake. Somebody, it's a remnant of people in the in in this assembly that's trying to live right. Not perfect, but trying to live right. And I just want to be one of the ones, hallelujah, that lift my hands and say, that can say, no, I confess I'm not perfect. Make mistakes every other day, if not every day. But my, but my heart is so turned to the Lord that I mean to do right by everybody, the right to the to the ones that saved, unsaved, the converted, unconverted, those who's trying to figure it out, those who don't have no desire to figure it out. I want to be because because every day we want to exemplify and represent Christ to the best of our ability. So you that's on here, if you ever have experienced agony and affliction through the through uh, uh, some people or through a person by the way the assembly and our, assembling ourselves together to become the church I, I pray that you have recovered or that you are recovering don't we cannot allow the enemy to, to, to afflict people so bad that they stay away from the house of God because that's his goal. It's a setup. Again, it's a diversion to keep us from assembling ourselves in the house of God. That's a trick of, of the enemy. And so we have to help people heal. We have to help people recover. But first, we have to make sure that we are healed and we are totally turned to God so we can go and strengthen our brothers. The worst, the worst thing we could ever do is go try to encourage somebody, witness to somebody, but we end up sharing our sad song. Oh, good God Almighty. No, we want to, again, we want to stand out and we want to be the ones to show people that I'm living this word to the best of my ability every day. So I pray for those who has walked away, not from God, haven't walked away from their salvation, haven't walked away from Christianity, but have walked away from the church, walked away from the church because of what they had experienced by the way of people. We can't count it as the church. We have to just, we, again, we have to look at it from a perspective. It's just a heart thing. It's a mind thing. Let this, let our minds, our minds, our minds has to be like Christ. Let this mind be within us, which was also what? In Christ Jesus. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our attitudes and by the renewing of our minds so we can go and strengthen our brother. So we can go and strengthen the one that's been hurt. So we can go and strengthen the one that's been damaged. So we can find the one that say, I will never go to church again. And we can have this conversation to them. Baby, you are blaming the church. The church itself is not at fault. It was a few people that just didn't, just don't have it figured out. I'm going to say this and I'm going to let God's people go. One of the things that, that saved my Christian journey with God, when I say it that way, one of the things that saved me in ministry, one of the things that, that helped me uh, continue in ministry was uh, a, a, a young lady in a, in a church um, years ago, she came to me and told me, she said, you know, everybody does not take the Christianity seriously. That blew me away. That blew, that blew my mind. She said, everybody does not take their Christianity seriously. Everybody does not take their Christianity seriously enough to love, to forgive, 
to 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 extend grace and kindness. Every, everybody's not don't take their Christianity seriously seriously enough where they don't allow a jealousy an offense to come upon them. And so that let me know right then and there that if people don't take their Christianity seriously, that they are prone to operate in their flesh. Because if we don't walk in the spirit, we will fulfill the lust of this flesh. And this flesh wants to be entertained. This flesh wants this flesh wants to be gratified. And some people gratification is gossip. Some grat people gratification is backbiting. Some gratification of people is jealousy. And so if we don't walk in the spirit, we'll find ourselves doing these things. So we have to take our Christianity so seriously that we're totally converted. We're totally turned, we will totally, totally turn to God to where we're not a, a, a victim. We're, we're not the ones who's, who's the one causing any agony upon anybody. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm taking my Christianity seriously, so seriously that I want to display the love of Jesus Christ each and every day. So I so I pray I, again. I pray that you anyone had experienced uh, again this 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 type of hurt, this hurt that cuts so deep. I pray that you have recovered, and if you are recovering, I say recover, recover, and so you can go and be used by God. So you can go and you can have fellowship among the brother. It's easy to go to, to go to church to be comfortable and not and not speak to nobody. It's easy to go and get what you need and, and go about your business, go about your business and not display the love of Christ. Oh, that's not easy, but that's not God. That that's that, that's not kingdom. And that's where the enemy wants us, where we isolated, where we can become selfish and self-righteousness, where we just all up to stuck in ourselves because of our past experiences. Our past experience keeps us from, from progressing forward. And people need to hear from you. People need to see your love of Jesus. People need to see your smiling face. People need to see your joy. People need to see that the word that you read and your prayer life, that you going to church and praising and worshiping God, they need to see is authentic, not only in the building, but outside of the building. In the name of Jesus. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, as we just scratch the surface, oh God, to become your life, oh God, to become the hearts that are truly converted, truly turned to you, that are dedicated to the Lord. Oh God, so much, oh God, that we exemplify holiness and righteousness. We extend grace, we extend love, and we extend peace to those who have been hurt and who have been damaged by the way of people in the in our assemblies. The building is innocent. It's not the church, the system of church. It's God, it's those who are struggling to find their way, those who are struggling, who heart is truly has not totally God been submitted to you and who has not turned to you wholeheartedly. But we pray for those. We pray for those, oh God, oh God, who continue, God, to do a uh, uh, better of evil, God, and, and speaking, oh God, oh God, ill better against people, oh God. We pray for those, oh God, oh God, who, who are enemies, oh God, in our assemblies, those, oh God, with jealous spirits, oh God, and those who have mean spirits, oh God, in the wrong attitude, those who are not taking their Christianity seriously. We pray for them, God. We pray for them in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray, Father, that the good begin to outweigh the bad, that there's more righteousness, there's more, there's more holiness, there's more display of the fruits of the spirit within our assemblies than, than the unconverted hearts. I pray there are more converted hearts, oh God, than unconverted hearts in our assemblies in the name of Jesus. So help us, oh God, to continue to recover. Help us, oh God, to continue to be that light that tells a younger believer, that tells a saint, that tells that one that has walked away from the church, oh God, that it's okay. And God, we can have these conversations with them to better explain, Father, in the name of Jesus, why it happened, but not to fall prey to the enemy, because that is a trick of the enemy to have people walk away from the assembly, oh God, of gathering ourselves together to become the church. God, you died for the church. You gave yourself to it. You sacrificed, sacrificed yourself 
for God the church, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, you said upon this rock you will build your church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And God, we speak in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, God, that the enemy shall not and is not and will not have its way in our assemblies in the name of Jesus. We stand up for righteousness. We stand up for holiness, God, and we will love. We will love, God. We will love the sin, the sinner, and the saint. We'll love, oh God, those, oh God, who even seem unlovable. God, we will love, God. We will display the love of Jesus Christ. We will display your grace. We'll display your peace and your kindness in the name of Jesus, oh God. The way we live, oh God, in our homes and oh God, in our behavior, God, within our assemblies, up under the roof of our churches, we will display wherever we go, wherever we go, wherever we are seen, God, we will display the love of Jesus Christ. We just not going to be greeters in the church. Oh, bless your name. We will even be greeters outside the church. Oh, God, we won't just shout. Oh, God, oh, God, to greet your neighbor, say something kind to your neighbor in the church at a command, oh, God. But even outside the church, oh, God, we will greet with a holy greeting. We will greet, oh, God, with the love of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus, oh, God. We want to tell this world. We want to tell people, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you live, Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you are risen Savior, God, oh God, we bless your name, oh God, oh God, that you are the risen Savior. We thank you for saving us, and thank you for saving us, oh God, from our immaturity. Thank you, God, that we are continuing to grow. We get better in you each and every day. Oh God, we repent. We ask for forgiveness of any wrong, anyone we have offended, anyone we may need to go back and apologize to God, we do because every day, God, we want to be in right standing with you in the name of Jesus. So we fix it quickly. We fix it swiftly, God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. And so we have a turned heart towards you. We have a turned mind towards you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We have a, a kingdom heart and a kingdom mindset, Father, in the name of Jesus. And God, we give you glory, God. We give you honor and praise in Jesus. And I thank you for healing. I thank you for healing healing, God, any of us, all of us, oh God, that has experienced this type of hurt in the name of Jesus. I say recover, recover, be healed and restore, be renewed and revived, become the new creature in Christ in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you, God. We don't count into the system of church, oh God, but we pray for those people, God, who still trying to figure it out in the name of Jesus. So God, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. And amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Well, praise God. I pray this message um spoke to you somehow, <laughs> ministered to you, encouraged you. But but the thing that the Lord has put on my heart for the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about this recovery from this church hurt and this church damage. Oh my God. If you know somebody who has walked away from the church, you know somebody who has, you, has told you, child, I will never go to church again because of their past experience. Tell them they want to get on and hear this series for the next couple of weeks as we try to dive a little bit deeper. So I pray this intro to this um, tonight um, blessed you, and I pray that you walk away healed, recover, and you walk away with a sister. Pray for those. Pray for those who have caused affliction and damage in the body of Christ. Pray for them. Oh, thank you. Pray for them. Pray for them. Because, because maybe they're just at that place where they're not taking their Christianity seriously enough. And so they, they are the ones that continue to cause pain and afflictions in our in the body of Christ. So let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. I'm going to let you go. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Have a, have a fantastic weekend as well. Uh, again, we're going to be praying on Tuesday. We're going to be praying on Tuesday. And we're going to be back on Bible study next Thursday. So God love you. And as we always say, your God loves you so much more. I prophesy you are healed, you are new, and you restore, and you are recovered, and you are recovering in the name of Jesus. Good night. We, bl we bless you in Jesus' name.
Thank you.